Hi guys, today we're going to introduce the process of SIP extension registrations and something to note in this process. Register associates a user's identifications or AOR with one or more locations. It is simply a mechanism where a phone communicates, hey, I'm Bob's phone, here is my username and password. Or oh, if you get any calls from me, I'm at this particular IP address. And here is the SIP registration flow. In this SIP extension registration packet, in the form line, we can see the username and IP address of registration slot. In the next line, we can see the username and IP address of registration destination. And in the contact line, we can see it contains the URL at which the user agent would like to receive request. And in the user agent line, you can see the vendor name of the endpoint. At last, in the expire line, you can see the expiration time of this registration. In the following, we will introduce the configurations that would be related with the SIP registration. First, we move on to user settings. Caller ID shows username parameter of from URI. Registration name shows username parameter of authorization field. Registration password tells us the password to register this extension. Concurrent registrations decide how many SIP devices can register this extension. The maximum is up to three. Next, we move to advanced settings. In this page, you can choose DTMF mod from RFC to SIP inform to inband, and even you can choose auto mod in this menu. If you want to dip into DTMF, please check out the video we post before. And in transport menu, you can choose UDP, TCP, or TLS. If you tick qualify, it will enable endpoint detection for this extension. And enable NAT helps you deal with scenario like when the SIP endpoint is behind a router. Then we move to security settings. You should enable allow remote registration when endpoint is located in a different network segment with the PBX. As for IP restrictions, this option is to allow specific IP address to register the extension. And the SIP user agent identification verifies the vendor name in the registration request. At last, we move to SIP settings. In this page, you can change UTP port, TCP port, outbound SIP port range, and max registration time. The outbound SIP port range designed the source port which PBX used to send SIP message to the provider. Here is a little question. When do we need to change our local SIP port? There are two usage scenarios. First, we will change the default value for security reason. I know that sounds a bit ambiguous, but the fact is that the default part is of an attack, which leads to a variety of problems. And there is another scenario. When we register multiple SIP chunks to the same provider, we should change the default value that could help the provider to distinguish the SIP flow. And then we move to the troubleshooting part. If SIP extension register failed, you could check the issues by the following steps. There are some checkpoints in PBX side. First, IP restrictions. If you enable the IP restrictions, remember add the IP of your phone into primitive IP address. Two, concurrent registrations. Register one extension for multiple phones and make sure the concurrent registration is set to the right number. Three, fill in the proper user agent. For example, the user agent of Earlink IP phone is Earlink. It's better to leave it blanket if you don't need it. 4. Transport mod. Check if the type of transport on IP phone is matched with the value in the extension advanced transport settings. 5. Allow remote registrations. If your IP phone is located in the different network segment with your PBX, please check the option. 6. If the phone register fail for too many times, the PBX will block it. You can see the block list in the security, security rules, block IPs. And there are also some checkpoints in client side. First, make sure username, password, and registration name are correctly filled in the client side. And then, make sure transport mode and port number are matched with PBX settings. And if remote registration failure has occurred, there are some checkpoints in PBX side. First, make sure remote register option has been ticked. Second, make sure remote IP is not blocked by our PBX. And you should also disable the SIP ALG option on router. Alright guys, this is what we have in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, get more detail about troubleshooting, check out our knowledge base. 
Get more information about system configuration? Please visit our document center. I'll see you guys in the next one.